May 3rd, 1961. This day, President Habib Bourguiba of the Tunisian Republic arrives in Washington on the personal invitation of President Kennedy for a state visit to the United States. President Bourguiba is the first chief of state to be invited by President Kennedy, who has hailed him as a dynamic leader and a courageous statesman. American President John F. Kennedy and Mrs. Kennedy arrive at the airfield to wait for the Tunisian leader. to welcome him are the American Chief of State and First Lady. An immediate sympathy springs up between the wives of the two leaders who greet each other in French. Among the top diplomatic and military dignitaries on hand to welcome the President are Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Mrs. Rusk. President Kennedy expresses the American people's welcome to a man who is a champion of freedom and who fought for his country's independence. Following the warm reception at the airport, the presidential party leaves for the city of Washington. The streets are thronged by Americans cheering the African leader as a parade escorts him on his way. stay in Washington, President and Mrs. Bourguiba will make their home at Blair House, the residence of official guests of the American president. Later in the day, escorted by the American chief of protocol, Andrew Biddle Duke, the visitors set off on a drive around Washington. Their visit has come at an auspicious time. The American capital is at its scenic best in the month of May. The Jefferson Memorial interests the president. The Lincoln Memorial honors one of the best loved American presidents. Chief of State arrives to pay his respects to the memory of Abraham Lincoln, whose work and life, he stated, have greatly inspired his own. As the party leaves, they see in the distance the memorial to America's first president, the Washington Monument. That evening, President and Mrs. Kennedy hold an official dinner in honor of President Bourguiba at the White House. Leaders of official Washington are present. 
The splendor of the occasion is recorded by cameramen of many nations. President and Mrs. Bourguiba are accompanied by Ambassador Habib Bourguiba Jr. and his wife. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson and Mrs. Johnson. Assistant Secretary of State G. Menon Williams and Mrs. Williams and United Nations Ambassador Adlai Stevenson arrive for the occasion. The two leaders and their wives greet the guests. At dinner, President Kennedy toasted President Bourguiba as a revolutionary who has turned his talents to bringing goodwill and peace to his people and to the people of neighboring countries. As a tribute to the visiting chief of state, the American Congress convenes in a joint session Responding to their invitation, President Bourguiba will address the Senate and the House of Representatives. The elected representatives of the American people welcome President Bourguiba as a lover of freedom and humanity and a great world citizen. Honorable membre du Congrès, c'est pour moi une joie, en même temps qu'un honneur, que de m'adresser. Honorable members of Congress, it is both an honor and a great joy for me to address the representatives of a friendly people who share with us the same devotion to the deepest human values. The primary quest of nationalism, as President Kennedy has so well understood it, is essentially liberation from the degrading subjugation of man to man and of people to people. Nous n'avons jamais hésité, en ce qui nous concerne, à souligner à l'adresse du monde occidental. We have never hesitated to point out to the Western world the harm it has done itself by compromising with its own principles in order to avoid giving offense to some of its members. It is therefore a real source of satisfaction to us to see the United States of America return to its traditional policy of anti-colonialism and support for the principle of self-determination and independence for all people. We have never ceased to proclaim our full and unqualified support for the struggle of our Algerian brethren for independence or to translate that support from the moral to the material plane. Puissent les peuples tunisiens et américains affronter un avenir... May the Tunisian and American peoples look forward to a future in which these links will be even stronger, based as they are on understanding, respect, and affection. These excerpts, and indeed the entire speech, met with a warm response. The Washington headquarters of the American Federation of Labor, Congress of Industrial Organizations. President Bourguiba renews an old acquaintance as he is warmly greeted by George Meany, president of the AFL CIO. Mr. Meany shows President Bourguiba a mosaic bearing the motto, Labor is Life, at the building's entrance. The president inscribes his good wishes in the guest book. George Meany of the AFL CIO and his guest have been friends since the Tunisian leader attended an international labor conference in San Francisco in 1951. The Washington Mosque, which is also a center for Islamic studies, is among Washington's most picturesque structures. President Bourguiba is greeted by ambassadors to the United States from Islamic countries. The director, Dr. Mahmoud Hobala, and the president discuss some of the cultural programs, including those which are designed to promote a greater understanding of Islam among non-Muslims.
at the National Press Club, American and international journalists gather to hear a talk by President Bourguiba. The welcome is tumultuous. In the words of one reporter, we are happy to see you. As always, you bring us good fortune. Monsieur le Président, Messieurs, c'est avec un réel plaisir que je vous rencontre de nouveau, après cinq ans, et que je salue en vous les représentants... It is a real pleasure to meet you again after five years, and to salute you as the representatives of the American press, and even of the non-American press. I hope that in the richest and most powerful country in the world, the press does not forget that alongside of its duty of informing, there exists for it an exalted duty of forming, educating and elevating man, and of inculcating in him a sense of solidarity. Merci, Monsieur le Président. The Zoological Gardens is the home of a pair of Tunisian gazelles, presented in 1958 by President and Mrs. Bourguiba. She now sees an offspring born in Washington. This shy, delicate creature will grow up into one of the most graceful of all animals. At the White House, President Bourguiba and President Kennedy have an exchange of views on a broad range of subjects. At these talks, President Bourguiba stressed Tunisia's desire to realize its human and material potential through a well-conceived national program. The two presidents agreed that the cooperative efforts of the two countries should be continued and expanded. We have uh, developed uh, extremely friendly personal ties uh, during this visit. Uh, I've admired him for a great many years, and I must say that uh, he leaves Washington with the uh, sure knowledge that he has uh, holds a memorable place in the uh, hearts of uh, all Americans who uh, value uh, fortitude, perseverance, and vision. Je suis très fier des paroles aimable et affectueuse de M. le Président Kennedy. Nous avons combattu pour la liberté. Nous continuons cette lutte pour... I am most proud of the kind words just spoken by President Kennedy. We have fought for liberty, and we continue the struggle to obtain the conditions for the full exercise of that freedom. In this second phase of our struggle, we have, as a supporter, President Kennedy and the people of the United States, whose welcome has gone straight to our hearts. Et le peuple américain, dont l'accueil nous est allé droit au cœur. That night, the Hotel Mayflower is the scene of a dinner given by President and Mrs. Bourguiba in honor of President and Mrs. Kennedy. <music> Ambassador Habib Bourguiba Jr. escorts Mrs. Kennedy, while Mrs. Bourguiba Jr. is escorted by President Kennedy. Other guests include leading political and diplomatic figures. At the request of photographers, the two presidents and their wives pose for photographs before rejoining the party. This is the eve of President and Mrs. Borgiba's departure from the nation's capital. New York City showers its welcome on the Tunisian president in the form of confetti and ticker tape, a traditional greeting reserved for the most esteemed visitors. 
200,000 New Yorkers line the streets and lean out of buildings to cheer President Bourguiba. The ovation moved the Tunisian leader to say, this strengthens my conviction that our two peoples must stand together. After the parade, to the Tunisian trade office in one of New York's most fashionable areas. A deep interest in how his country's export products are displayed and presented in the United States led President Bourguiba to come and see for himself. Olives and olive oil occupy an important place in the trade office's exhibits. Tunisian crafts are also displayed, such as this ornate birdcage and colorful rugs. Passers-by show their interest in the Tunisian chief of state and wait for a chance to meet him. The United Nations, in which rest so many hopes for the peace and prosperity of the world, awaits the arrival of one of its staunchest supporters. President Bourguiba is warmly greeted by United Nations Secretary General Dag Hammarskjöld. The visitor is about to unveil an archaeological treasure a gift of Tunisia to the United Nations. The mosaic, discovered in 1939 in Hydra, is nearly 2,000 years old and will stand in the delegates' lounge. In a specially arranged meeting with envoys of African and Asian countries, President Bourguiba expressed his hope for African unity, but stated that it would have to be based on a realistic awareness of the diversity among African nations and peoples. At the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, a reception is given by Tunisian ambassador to the United Nations, Manji Slim, in honor of the chief of state. United Nations delegates and envoys come to the reception to meet the president. Ambassador Slim stands beside the president as he receives the United Nations delegates. concludes his visit, President Bourguiba has this to say. I have been very touched by the warmth of the welcome which I have encountered in Washington as well as in New York, everywhere I have gone, which proves to me that the American people feel the greatest friendship for the Tunisian people a source among the Tunisian people of a great pride. I hope that the future reinforces that friendship and that we will be strong enough to withstand the vicissitudes of destiny.